This is an EEG basics mini lesson focusing on small sharp spikes. Let's review the EEG of this patient who has been admitted for spells of uncertain significance. You'll note that this patient is awake right now as shown by the presence of the bilateral posterior dominant rhythm which is symmetrical and about 9 hertz. If we move forward we can see attenuation of the posterior dominant rhythm with eye opening and then augmentation of the posterior dominant rhythm with eye closure. So far this patient has a normal awake rhythm. This patient is probably drowsy as evidenced by the slow roving eye movements seen in the temporal chains. Then we start to see a loss of muscle artifact, the emergence of some theta rhythm, and mild slowing and anterior migration of the posterior dominant rhythm. This patient is now drowsy. Now here we see something different. You have to look very carefully and at first it is not obvious. If we move forward we can see a sharply contoured waveform in the left temporal region. It is very low voltage and short duration. Once you notice this you might notice that there are a few more. One just before it and one just after it and probably one independently in the right temporal region. We can see that it has a broad field. It seems to have maximum electronegativity at around F7 but also with a field that extends to F3. There is nothing in the contralateral hemisphere with this one. One of the better ways to see this is to switch to a referential montage. Now that we switch to an ipsilateral mastoid montage, considering that we thought this was most prominent in the temporal and frontal regions, we can see that the discharge is much more easily seen, as are its other neighbors. Again, we can see that it is very sharply contoured with a very low voltage. If we measure this carefully, from peak to trough, we can see that it is about 35 microvolts and lasts 35 milliseconds, which is very short duration. This is a small, sharp spike. A few things to note about this small, sharp spike is that it does have a subtle, low-voltage, slow wave following the sharp waveform. Also, it has a broad field that extends throughout the frontal and temporal regions. It does not disrupt the background like a true epileptiform discharge, and it is occurring during stage 2 sleep. This is a particularly good example of a small sharp spike, again with the broad field best seen in an ipsilateral mastoid montage and with a low voltage slow wave following it. Here is an example of a small sharp spike in the contralateral hemisphere, but it is not necessarily unusual for there to be a predominance on one side or the other, particularly in a short recording. As we scroll forward, you can see that there is a phenomenon whereby when you first recognize a small sharp spike, all of a sudden it becomes easier to see subsequent ones. Here, here, and so on. Of note, these are easily mistaken for artifact from the EKG, but if we set up our cursor, we can see that this right-sided small sharp spike is nowhere near the QRS complex of the EKG lead. Let's compare a small sharp spike to a typical left anterior temporal sharp wave as seen in this patient. You can see near the center of the page a very high amplitude, long duration, sharply contoured waveform which extends throughout the left temporal region with a field also into the left frontal region to some extent. You can see that this is much longer duration than our typical small sharp spike and much higher amplitude. This is probably best appreciated if we switch to a referential montage. In this case, the average reference montage. If we do a simple measurement on a referential montage, you can see that the amplitude of this is at least 70 microvolts, and that's not counting the aftercoming slow wave. You can also note that there is a disruption to the background. Here we see the sharp wave, which has at least three phases, followed by a return to the baseline background. During the epileptiform discharge, the background in the left temporal region is very different than the background that is seen before and after. This follows all of the rules of an epileptiform discharge in terms of being sharply contoured with multiple phases, with a field that makes sense, with an aftercoming slow wave, and with disruption of the background. This is very different from the small sharp spikes we saw before. To summarize, small sharp spikes are characterized by their features. They are small in that they are usually less than 50 microvolts in amplitude. They are sharp in that they are typically less than 50 milliseconds in duration, and they are spikes in that they are sharply contoured, but they are not epileptic and are a benign variant. Small sharp spikes, a benign variant, can be distinguished from focal epileptiform discharges in many ways. As mentioned earlier, they are small and sharp. They occur during sleep. They are usually maximal in the temporal region, but can have a very broad field. They usually have a simple morphology, often with only two phases and most importantly, they are not associated with epilepsy. 
In contrast, focal spikes and sharp waves can be of any size. They can occur in any state and any location. They often have a complex or multiphasic morphology, and they do indicate underlying epilepsy.